Okay, thank you. So last the week, we have um, uh, studied the uh, algebraic geometry analog of uh, geometry of numbers. Uh, and also we have introduced the notion of adelic curves. So uh, the remaining lectures we will uh, focus on the geometry, arithmetic geometry of adelic curves. So uh, in the morning I will give you uh, some uh, historical uh, presentation on the classical algebra geometry of a number field. And in the afternoon I will develop the geometry of numbers for adelic curves. Uh, so, So the basic uh, construction of Arakliff geometry is arithmetic, the notion of arithmetic variety. So you have already seen in the first lecture the geometry of numbers. That could be considered as some geometry of arithmetic variety of dimension one. So for general dimension, we need some uh, combination of algebraic geometry and uh, geometry of numbers. So uh, we just consider projective varieties, but uh, you should uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, so quasi-projective arithmetic variety also appears in the literature and are very important. So uh, they don't have exactly the same uh, behavior, So, but uh, uh, usually so usually we can consider projective um, arithmetic variety. So anyway, in my course, so I just consider projective ones. So uh, it just uh, mean uh, projective. The flat morphism of schemes. Which is uh, from X to a uh, spectrum of Z. Uh, such that scheme X is integral. So uh, why such a thing is interesting, for example, uh, so here you consider some projective uh, scheme, so you can always uh, embed x into some uh, uh, pn of z. So uh, just uh, close the sub-scheme. Then uh, it corresponds to uh, systems of uh, equations. So P1 uh, is a 0, Xn, 0, etc. P, uh, Pn, 0, Xn, 0. So these are polynomials, homogeneous polynomials of a uh, certain degree. And uh, uh, you can consider your, your subscheme as uh, the subscheme of P and Z defined by such equations. Um, so I write uh, this as a system. Then you have a correspondence between uh, X of uh, Z, the, the, the integral point of this variety, uh, will correspond to uh, solutions. Of S, so uh, solutions, uh, so integral solutions of this system. So in this way, we can interpret uh, Diophantine equation systems as uh, integral points of some uh, projective 
uh, arithmetic variety. And uh, it is expected that the behavior of the solution of the system is determined by uh, the geometric invariance of the, uh, the, the scheme. So, uh, in a sense that you can, for example, change the variables or change equations, you have different type of equations. So, from this point of view, it's difficult to see uh, how to describe the behavior of the solutions. But there are so, so many conjectures saying that if you know some arithmetic invariance of x, it will determine it will determine the behavior. For example, if uh, there is, there is a, an integral solution or not, uh, how, if there exists the same solution, is the solution uh, the solution set finite, or is the solution set dense in for some topology, etc. So all these conjectures are related to geometric invariance of the variety. So. It is, a, in some sense, a very important advancement in mathematics because in the ancient time, there were so many problems about Dufontine equations. So the, the equation may become very different, but if you know they share some common invariants viewed as a variety, then it is conjectured that you have the same behavior of the solutions. Okay, that, that is the, uh, the setting. Now, uh, so what is the relation with algebra geometry? So there is uh, some uh, uh, idea, very general idea of uh, arithmetic geometry is that, uh, so I write the principle here. So the geometry of x should be similar. Algebra geometry uh, relatively to some curve. For example, relatively to a P1 um, over some field, finite field, or any field. So uh, then we make a, a table comparing the two sides. Of course, these are very general ideas. So in the realization, you need to do some work. So uh, I write in the left-hand side algebraic geometry. And here, arithmetic geometry. So, uh, in the algebra geometry side, there is a, some base field. Okay, uh, so very usually it is assumed to be a finite field, but uh, for algebraic geometry uh, setting is not not so important. But just uh, let me assume that base field is a finite. Uh, in the side of arithmetic geometry, so. <laughs> it is not so well defined. So, of course, some, some people think of the field of uh, just uh, one element. So, zero is equal to one. Mm, but then uh, you have some trouble uh, of developing algebra geometry on such fields, so you need to do some complex thing. So, that exists in the literature, however. So, uh, let me just put, put it somewhere. Uh, so, I don't know, here. Okay, so uh, now on the arithmetic geometry side, the basic ring is Z. So here, you, you know, you, you may, you, maybe you have already known that uh, the ring of uh, polynomials of one variable of a field have a very similar behavior as Z. Z. For example, they are all Euclidean rings, they, so they have so many uh, similar properties. So of course here uh, we need to consider some geometry uh, model. So C is PK1. So this is the model for such uh, so uh, such ring. So it's competitive. Uh, so in some sense it's competitification. Uh, 
of uh, spec kt, so which is uh, affine line over k. Uh, so here, uh, of course, we can consider spec z. So you, you observe already that it is not compact, so you need to compactify uh, this scheme. So, but it is not possible to do it in a category of schemes, so you, you cannot find some proper scheme. So uh, containing speaker Z. So, uh, so I use uh, red color to to explain the difference. So, so you need to compactify formally by some point at the inf if infinity. So there is an uh, idea of Arakev compactification. So now you don't have uh, any screen skin structure on this set, so any reasonable skin structure on this set. Uh, of course, you have uh, the field of uh, uh, rational functions, so k, k of c, so here is just uh, the field of uh, rational functions of one variable over k. So on the arithmetic geometry side, it's just the q which is the friction field of, uh, of Z. Okay, so... <coughs> now... Uh, so, the geometry of the numbers. So, so, these are basic settings. Then, uh, geometry of the numbers. So, uh, here, you have seen that the geometry of numbers rather geometry of vector bundles. So then uh, maybe uh, E or, or C. So here, uh, in the geometry of numbers, you consider Euclidean lattices. So maybe uh, I write uh, the sound E which is a um, free a module of finite type. So in some sense, these are vector bundles over spectral Z. And then you need to put some uh, norm on ER. So for Euclidean lattices, this norm is assumed to be a uh, induced by some inner product. So the geometric invariance here is just the degree of E. So this is a, uh, an integer. And then uh, you have the arachidic degree of some, uh, uh, some data like this. So you have some uh, lattice which is, can be described in this way. So each with a norm. So uh, here you find the minus log of a d lambda. So this is the invariant corresponding to the degree uh, here. So I r remind you that this is the minus log of S1 with Sr. Uh, for the determinant norm. So here SI is a basis of E over Z. So in general, this is a, uh, not an integer, but rather a real number. So there is also a big difference with respect to uh, setting here. So now uh, you have a, a very natural invariant H0 of E, which is the dimension of uh, H0 C E over K. So uh, why I assume th that the field K is finite, so I can uh, compute the dimension of this vector space as a log of the Q of the cardinal of this uh, global section set. <coughs> so, uh, 
So uh, then here you also have some uh, natural integer, but uh, uh, here, as you have observed, the h zero of e is just the counting of number of uh, elements s in e such that the norm of s is bounded from one. So this is also a, a real number in general. So as I have said, so this set is uh, can be considered as, as the set of uh, sections, uh, rational sections, which has norm less than one everywhere. So it's in some sense similar to this set. So here I take log q uh, that explains the simula uh, simi uh, similarity of the geometric side and the arithmetic side. Okay. So uh, now I continue. So in the uh, algebraic uh, geometry setting, we can uh, often consider some. Uh, so maybe a P C of uh, R minus one, maybe. So. So this one can be considered as, in some sense, like, so, no, no, so, I, so we can also, uh, we can uh, often consider projective space. So more generally, we can consider P uh, of E, so this is a, uh, Projective variety over C. So, given a vector bundle, you can consider the projective space associated to the vector bundle. This is the scheme over C. And then, on this vector bundle, you have some uh, uh, topological line bundle, which is OE of 1. So, this is the line bundle over P. So, now in the arithmetic setting, so of course, we can consider PQ. Uh, R minus one, so all more generally, uh, so you can consider also PE over spec Z, and also you have some OE one. However, there's something which is not used. So this is this norm. This norm is not used. So it, it is not enough here to consider just the line bundle over such a projective space. You need to consider metric on such line bundle. So you, you should consider some Fubini duty metric. So maybe I use just one bar. So uh, I will go back a little later to the construction of uh, such uh, metric. So let me just introduce some height function. So if uh, you have some p, uh, Right, this is pi. It's a section of pi. So the height of uh, p is defined to be the, the degree of uh, p upper star OE of 1. So you have a line bundle of this variety. You can pull back by such a section to uh, find a line bundle over c. 
So we have discussed last week how to compute the degree of line bundle. So this degree of line bundle gives the height of the, the, the section. So it measures the complexity of the section. So in the arithmetic side, you have almost the same thing. So you take uh, uh, you take some p, uh, which which is a section. of this uh, variety. So you may consider this, uh, it as some uh, integral points of the variety. And then you can pull back uh, OE1 and also the Fibonacci split metric. And then you find uh, some Hermitian line bundle on spec Z. So that explains the importance of introducing some metric. Otherwise, you cannot compute the degree. So you can compute the R actual degree of this one. So this is defined as the height of, uh, of P. So the height function is quite important in the uh, geometry, uh, different time geometry. So, so that is the side of uh, geometry of the numbers. And finally, uh, for general for general variety, so you just uh, consider flat and the projective uh, map, the projective uh, morphism. Pi from some uh, scheme x to uh, to c. So maybe I need to write k morphism. And uh, here. So as you know, these are projective varieties. So projective arithmetic varieties. Um, so it is not not enough to uh, to just introduce this one because we need to add some point here. We it is not really projective, so really proper in the sense of uh, arithmetics. So you need to attach some uh, uh, analytic uh, objects. So maybe I write XR analytic. So you need to attach an uh, uh, analytic variety. So maybe I, I write XC to be, to be sure that you have always points, so XCR. So this is a, a complex analytic variety which serves to compactify such uh, objects. So I will explain uh, in more details. Just let me give you the, the comparison table. So uh, here, for computing the invariance of the uh, so geometric invariance, you need to introduce some line bundle. So sometimes the line, uh, the line bundle uh, could it be a canonical bundle? Sometimes be, uh, it, it, it could be more general line bundle. So here, it, it, for, for, so here you need to introduce some line bundle. L. Yeah. On X. So maybe I need to uh, use the right color to say that it's different. Um, so here you need to add uh, some metric. So, for example, if you have a line bundle, you can consider the push forward of a line bundle. So they, they, they will produce some vector bundle on C. And the such construction will correspond to uh, take the global section of L. And then uh, you take some uh, uh, 
norme, le subnorme. So uh, this norm is just defined as follows. You take uh, the norm of S, which is just the superman of X in X here. S by X. And then you can, for example, define a, a invariant volume of L. So, which is the limit sup of uh, n goes to the infinity. So, uh, h0 of x, uh, so h0 of uh, x l to power n, we divided by n to a power dimension of x over dimension of x factorial. And then, uh, on the arithmetic side, so the volume function is defined in a very similar way. So so you notice that you need to uh, specify the metric here. So this is this is the limit sup of and goes to the infinity uh, h zero hat of such a thing h zero x l to power n. And uh, equipped with this norm over n to the power dimension of x over dimension of x factor. So, so, for example, it, it is conjectured that if the volume of the genetic fiber uh, of uh, the canonical bundle so is positive, then uh, the set of integral points of in the projective or variety is not dense. It's not directly dense. So this is a very deep, um, very deep uh, problem in arithmetic geometry. So, okay. So now you have uh, uh, such a comparison. So, now I will uh, introduce some uh, definitions which appears in the right hand side of the comparison columns. Um, so, if you, have, uh, if you are more familiar with algebra geometry and find the arithmetic part a little bit difficult to understand, you can use such comparison and, uh, to uh, understand such uh, constructions. So let me uh, give you some formal definitions. The fix uh, x some projective arithmetic variety. So by Hermitian line bundle. Invertible OX module with line bundle uh, error. So equipped with a continuous metric phi on LC. So this is a pullback of L by the project projection morphism x c to uh, x. So you can change the the underlying ring. So you change uh, x over z to x c over uh, over c, and uh, you pull back the line bundle on x c. Then. Uh, you uh, can equip with it with a metric. So uh, I will explain a little bit. Uh, how, so what is the metric? So 
as you know, Xc is just the X time fiber product over spec Z, spec C. So there uh, you can attach some uh, analytic variety. So we change the topology of the scheme. So this is just a, a space of complex points of uh, the, the scheme plus analytic topology. So if you, you are not familiar with analytic topology, you just can consider it as some uh, differential variety. So you have some topology, Euclidean topology, uh, locally Euclidean topology. So I, I don't talk about the analytic functions, so just as the topological space, it's, it's just the subset of some Euclidean space locally a subset of Euclidean, Euclidean space defined by your system of equations. So, uh, so now, so you have some LC. So uh, phi on LC is just a family of norms. So where, where uh, so the norm at x is a norm of x at the star your uh, LC. So here x is a, a complex point of x. So you can pull back uh, your line bundle by your x, your uh, your morphism x, and then we require. Uh, that for any u uh, in, in xc, which is a Zaleski open set, and for any uh, s in gamma of u uh, l, lc, then you can find a function, so you can evaluate the function locally uh, at any point x in, in, uh, in C. So these functions for u C to R is continuous. So we just uh, require that the, the function defined by the evaluation of norm so is always continuous if you take a uh, so algebraic sections of uh, the line bundle. Uh, so just already, uh, I, mes I mentioned that uh, you, you also you need also require that the metric should be invariant by the complex conjugation. So because you are working with uh, Z, so you, you, you make a, a change of uh, ground ring. And on spec C, you have an action of complex conjugation. So that action will induce some action on the metric. So you need to uh, assume that the metric is invariant by complex conjugation. So, I will, so it's not, not so important, so I will not give the detail here. So now, uh, if, uh, of course, if you, uh, you have a global section, so you can define S phi as the superman of x in xc is phi of x. So this is always uh, positive, uh, uh, non-negative real number because you have a continuous function on some compact set. And you, you always have its maximal value, which is not infinity. So, uh, so now, uh, is there such thing? So maybe, uh, sorry, so maybe I should write XC, I'll say. So now this one is a norm on on such sets, gamma of XC, LC. 
so which is also invariant by complex conjugation. Okay. So now um, it is expected that uh, uh, on the right hand side you have similar results, constructions results to the left hand side. But uh, this is just some uh, very, so anyway, so if often very formal comparison, does not mean that you can copy proofs on the left hand side to the right hand side to prove anything in uh, arithmetic geometry. So, for example, there are very deep uh, conjecture like ABC conjecture, which could be proved in left hand side, but remains very deep problem on the right hand side. So, for example, if you look at the literature on ABC conjecture uh, in the arithmetic setting, you notice immediately that the method is very different from the uh, uh, geometric method. So, of course, we can give many explanations to uh, the difference, but I, I will give you some easy one. So, you, observe, uh, you can observe this set of uh, global sections uh, in the inside the unit ball. So I just make uh, some uh, uh, graph. So imagine that you have some uh, Euclidean lattice. And uh, then you, you, you can draw a, a unit a disk. So this is uh, similar to uh, H0C here. But uh, this set is uh, a vector space over a ground field. It, at least it is a group. It is stable under addition. Now, if you take two points here and here, you try to c calculate their sum, you find a point which is outside of the uh, unit disk. So, you don't have any reasonable uh, algebraic structure on such a set. So, that is the, one of the main difficulties at least for the study of uh, the arithmetic volume function. You don't have uh, uh, so classical techniques of uh, David Sage, you cannot write a hip, Samuel, uh, hip polynomial, so it is not a polynomial. So anyway, uh, so the volume here is, so anyway, the H0 here is not an integer, so there are something which are very different. So uh, our purpose is to uh, propose some method which works at simultaneously uh, here and there. So that is the, the motivation of our joint book. So let me explain a little bit how to uh, how to do it, but in a very classical setting. So then you got you you will get uh, enough motivation to. Uh, Study very general framework. <coughs> so, um, before that, I will uh, talk a little bit about uh, geometry. On the value of the field. So apparently that is quite different from these two, uh, two parts. But uh, our main method is to make a projection of the different, very different geometry to the same geometry of the truly valued field. And then uh, you get reasonable in arithmetic invariance or geometric invariance from the geometry of the uh, truly valued field. So, uh, so let me fix some uh, some field and the plus. Uh, so this is a trivial evaluation. So absolute value. So you have already observed the last week that this setting is a particular case of idyllic curve. So then you have some trivial product formula, etc. Then, uh, so fix also 
some vector space of uh, k of final rank. And uh, also uh, an outro metric So this is the mm, some adelic vector bundle on the adelic uh, curve defined by such uh, data. So just a little uh, remark. So uh, first one, for any uh, positive radius, so if you consider uh, the ball of radius R this is a vector subspace of V so the reason is that you have an altrometric norm and therefore you have some strong uh, triangle inequality so that this set is invariant by addition and then your, 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 your field is trivially valued. So if you multiply by some non-zero vector, non-zero element in K, non-zero scalar, you will not change the norm. So you stay in the ball. So you have just some, uh, some vector subspace. And the second observation is that if you consider all balls, So uh, this is just a finite set. Uh, and uh, so maybe I exclude the, the zero ball. Um, no, it's not necessary. So I just consider all balls. And uh, this is a finite set, and uh, the cardinal uh, is not more than dimension of V plus 1. Okay, so wh what is the reason? So then you, you observe that this is somehow a totally ordered subset of uh, the set of all uh, vector subspaces. So if you have two balls that are different, their dimension should be different because they, are, they, be, they can be compared. So, so you have uh, just the dimension k of v plus one choices for the dimension of subspaces. So, uh, so you have not so many choices. And therefore, so you can write this set as a, a sequence of vector subspaces. So there you will observe something which is very similar to uh, hadanah siman filtration. So it can be written in a form of uh, zero equal to V0 contained in V1 Vn which is V so here n is at least dimension k of V so at most, sorry, at most such dimension so uh, so for each i we just uh, write a new i which is minus log of a supremum of x x in vi so you could have a different uh, radius so different radius may produce the same ball you just pick the largest radius possible you take a minus log of this one 
And of course, by definition, you will have a mu one bigger than mu two, etc. Bigger than mu n. So now uh, I can draw a map. So you can uh, fit the data into a map like this. So you have a mu one, a mu two. Three, etc. Mu n minus two, mu n minus one, and the mu n. So you have some Picatinny uh, sequence. So you begin with uh, you begin with v, which is v n, and then you put. Um, the n minus one here. <coughs> so, uh, so here the coordinate is rank of the n. Sorry, I should move this one. So here the point here, the coordinate here is rank of the n. So here the. Uh, you find the rank of v n minus one, and here you have a v n minus two rank of v n minus two, and the x ray central, and then you have some uh, v three here, v two here. V1 here, and finally V0, which is 0. So here you find a rank of V1, rank of V2, etc. So you can draw a picture, uh, you put everything in this way. Uh, wh what do you get then? You get some uh, uh, R filtration, you get a family FTV. Some R um, filtration of the vector space V. So uh, it's just, just it's just the family index uh, of vector subspaces indexed by R. So which uh, becomes zero when uh, T becomes uh, larger than mu one. Which becomes uh, v when t is less uh, less than mu n, and uh, this function. Uh, so if you consider the rank of f t v as a function on t, so this function is left continuous. So. Uh, If you begin with such a filtration, you can also recover a flag of a sequence of vector subspaces and uh, uh, some, uh, some mu i, which will give you an ultrametric norm. So you have three type of things which are different, but they, are, they have one-to-one -one correspondence. You have one-to-one -one correspondence between ultrametric uh, norms and the flag, uh, so flag of vector subspaces with the sequence, decreasing sequence of slopes, and also this, this uh, R filtration. So, so you can change freely uh, between, uh, among uh, these uh, three type of, types of uh, objects. Okay, so. Uh, So I, it's better that I write a whole table because these are important. So there are canonical bijection. Um, so first of all, a set of pairs. Also, uh, mu one, 
as you have n mu n. So second set of all uh, filtrations. V, which is defined in such a way, so we get some family of uh, subspaces parametrized by R. And finally, a set of uh, metric norms. Okay, now uh, I can define the Arakel decree. So it's just a minus log of S1, etc. <coughs> Sn. So here Si is a basis of V over K. So now you can uh, wonder how you uh, calculate the same uh, invariant by using uh, the language of uh, pairs and uh, our filtrations. So I will just give you a, a formula. So, so this is just the sum of I. Sorry, so I should not write the air here because uh, I need N to de denote uh, the length of a flag. So, uh, So uh, one, one way to compute this invariant is mu i times the dimension of k of the quotient space v i over v i minus 1. And then now you observe that it is somehow, uh, so if you, took, uh, you, you take this graph, so dimension of v i over v i minus 1 is just the, the size of jumps. So, uh, if you are familiar with inter, uh, uh, distribution, so you'll find that this is just a minus integral over r, t times uh, d, d of uh, the function dimension over k, ftd. So in some sense, it's a fancy way to uh, compute such a recurve degree. Integral of t with respect to such distribution. So you, you just have a, stair, a stairwise uh, function and the uh, uh, distribution of the such a function is just uh, the, the sum of the Dirac measures on each, uh, each uh, coordinate of jumps times the size of the jump, and uh, which is just uh, here. Okay. Now, uh, what is the relation with the uh, situation here? So, maybe I, <laughs> I need to erase uh, somewhere. Okay, so. So you have already seen that uh, for uh, Hadana Sima filtration, you got something like this. You got a flag, and you got a decreasing sequence of slopes. So that uh, comes into the geometry of vector bundles. And uh, uh, I will explain uh, how to uh, ob obtain something similar. So uh, now I that. Uh, uh, if the uh, other vector bundle of a Q, so um, so maybe uh, maybe it's better to take uh, this point of view. Uh, point of view. So you have uh, E some free Z module. Finite type. Uh, 
and uh, you have some now. Okay, and then I will give you the definition of an R filtration. So you take Ft of E bar, which is the vector space of a Q and generated by a sections uh, in E. So uh, with the norm of S is more than exponential minus T. So now when T becomes large, you have a smaller, uh, how to say, you have a smaller uh, radius. For example, if you uh, take T very large, and then you have just a very small, uh, small ball. It just finds the origin inside the small ball. So the vector space generated is a zero vector space. And if this becomes a, a little bit large, larger, so you have something here, and uh, which genera uh, generates a vector subspace of rank one. And if the, the radius becomes really large, you find a basis. So this one is a, is a R filtration. Of, uh, uh, of EQ, of this vector space. And uh, uh, you have uh, some relation uh, with successive minima. Uh, so you have already seen that, uh, uh, so so let me just give you uh, the first uh, definition, mu i of e bar, which is the supremum of t in r, such that the dimension of f t in bar is greater than i. So in this uh, graph, you just find some i here, and then you take the first uh, uh, First, the coordinates that your function attains uh, attains i. Now, what you can observe is that the new one of each is just a minus log of the lambda mu of uh, uh, of lambda. So, if corresponding to uh, to some lattice, to some lattice lambda. So in the first uh, lecture, I have, give, I have given the definition of lambda mean, so which is uh, the radius. So, so the, how to say, the, the length of the shortest uh, vector in, inside the the, the, the lattice, uh, which is non zero. And so then, uh, if you take uh, this point of view, you find that it's just the minus log of this radius. And of course, you have another invariant, which is the uh, smallest radius that your ball contains a basis. So that is the smallest ball that uh, vector space generated by such thing is the total vector space. Therefore, you have a uh, uh, mu of dimension, so maybe of rank, uh, so inside R to n. So you have a new n of each which is just the minus log of lambda max of lambda. So you see uh, such invariants uh, this can be described by also by R filtrations. So in some sense, R filtration, R -filtration will build, build up a bridge between these two sides. So in the geometry of vector bundles, you have hardener Hardenas filtration corresponding to R filtrations. So here you have uh, successive minima corresponding also to R filtrations. So uh, why such thing is interesting? So now uh, let me go back to the uh, arithmetic higher dimensional arithmetic varieties. So. Uh, now let uh, x be a projective arithmetic variety. Right 
And the error of your commission line bundle. And uh, uh, I take EN, which is H0. So here uh, I write L as L equal to this uh, sum metric. So EN, uh, maybe EN bar, which is H0 of uh, uh, X L to power N. And then you have some uh, norm which is a supernorm corresponding to n phi. And then what will you do? So you take just v t uh, of l. So I define this as, uh, so I take maybe v t and uh, l, which is f, so f is uh, such a filtration, and t. And then I take uh, this EN. So I consider the vec Q vector subspace generated by a uh, lattice point of a radius exponential minus NT inside this lattice. OK, so claim is that if you take a uh, VT point, of L, so which is a, a direct sum for n inside n, so f and t of uh, en. So this is a, a graded q algebra. So it's a graded sub Q algebra of uh, such thing. So the exam of H0 XQ LQ. So if you are familiar with algebra geometry, you find this uh, Cox ring of the line bundle LQ. And uh, this is just called a graded linear series. So you find a graded linear sub, uh, graded sub K algebra of a somehow nice graded algebra. So uh, the advantage of introducing such a geometry of uh, trivially valued field is that you obtain something which has a very nice uh, algebraic property. You have uh, something which is uh, stable and uh, addition and uh, multiplication. So, uh, so it's... Uh, uh, maybe you forget the tensor product. Yeah, yeah, I forget the tensor product. Sorry. Thank you. So tensor power, tensor power n. Yeah, you are right. Yes. So because here EN is some vectors, so some subset of. So, so sorry, EN is this this thing is sub 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 set of this vector space. So you take vector subspace generated by by uh, such thing. Okay. So that is uh, very interesting because you have a, a link with algebraic geometry. So I, I will let, so I just let you to check that uh, this is a stable and a multiplication. So, so maybe it's not, not too hard. So this is not enough because our purpose is to recover this H0. So you have something which is geometrically nice, but you need some arithmetic. Uh, data. So uh, let me introduce a theorem of Zile and Sule. I will not explain the uh, proof here. So, but to understand this uh, theorem, you can uh, refer to uh, somehow geometric version. Of the second Minkowski's theorem. It's 
somehow like that. So the theorem says that uh, there exists uh, an absolute constant C such that for any uh, lattice or adelic vector bundles over Q. E bar, if you say E, with a norm. So you have, uh, you can compare it to zero hat of E, uh, which is, uh, uh, which is log of uh, coordinates, uh, so log of cardinal of elements in the unit ball. So minus sum uh, for any I, uh, from 1 to uh, the rank of E. So max of a new I of E and the 0. So this Y is controlled by C times of uh, times rank E times log of rank E. So uh, this is not that far away from uh, such h0 hat of e. Then, just uh, I comes back to I come back to uh, such equality. So instead of computing the degree hat, uh, so such like, like this integral of t, such a thing. So, uh, so here if you compute the integral of t, you find the degree which is, in some sense, the sum of all new i of e. Uh, so here, you just have uh, the integral on, on a positive, uh, so t, uh, d of dimension k. So here is dimension q, uh, f t of e. So there you can make a change of, uh, so how to say, uh, integral, integral by parts. So you find this is just the integral of the zero to the infinity uh, dimension Q F T of E D T. Now uh, you observe a really a strong link because then you have such a, a construction of a family of a, a greater linear series. And the dimension of each component is closely related to H0 hat, because it appears here. Dimension is, uh, if you integrate the dimension, you recover almost the H hat 0, of course, with some error term. So, uh, I will explain what you, uh, we can do with, with such uh, techniques. So, but uh, I will rather explain this uh, late, a little bit later uh, in the general Adelic curve setting. So let me just uh, recall some of the basic uh, invariants here and uh, the results, statements of results. So always you have some comparison on the two sides. So for example, if you have an integral projective scheme, uh, so maybe over some few case, and the least dimension of x, so uh, here I don't consider any uh, relative structure of the scheme over some some curve. So, um, but you still have some uh, similarity. So you have some uh, x 
uh, on specular seed. And then V is the dimension of X. Now, uh, if uh, X error is an uh, invertible or X module, so here you have L bar, information line bundle. So uh, you have a volume of L, you have a volume hat of the L. So you have observed the definition there. And uh, uh, there are some properties. So if you take a volume of uh, L to some power n, so you find n to power d times the volume of L. So here you have the same thing. So you have a volume hat of uh, L power n. You just have the n to power d a volume hat of L. So, uh, so if L is ample, then uh, such volume L can be computed as the degree of the intersection product. Uh, here we ha also have the same thing. So uh, if uh, so, L is ample. So maybe uh, I write L here as L phi, and the phi is uh, uh, semi-positive. And to the height function, uh, so height function defined as uh, H uh, P is a degree height of P up star. So if the height function is positive, then you uh, will have uh, uh, the volume of uh, L bar is given by the degree hat of the arithmetic intersection product. So this is known as Hilpel Type theorem. So it's proved by Asile um, Soule. and best push. So each time you you find something which is rather standard here and. Uh, you find something which is complicated or more evolved here. So I mainly give uh, some reference to uh, on the arithmetic side. So um, so for example, L is in big. Oh, I, so. Volume of L is positive, namely L is big. So if and only if you can find some A ample, um, such that H0 of X L2 power, so you can find some N. So uh, L to power n tensor A zero is not zero. So you can find uh, inside your some power of your line bundle something which is uh, larger than an ample line bundle. And uh, here you have the same thing. So the volume heads of L is uh, positive. If and only if you can find some some h 
a bar, uh, which is ample. So I will not give you a definition for, um, um, for ample, but uh, it's almost the same thing to say that to, uh, to say the condition here. Else ample line uh, metric is semi-positive and the height is positive. So, uh, you can find some n such that h zero hat of uh, um, of l to power n times a zero is not zero. So, namely, in such uh, lattice, you find uh, some uh, non-zero uh, lattice point in the unit pole. Uh, also, Not so difficult to prove, but uh, this one is uh, difficult. So you have a continuity So for example, uh, you have L and M and two line bundles such that the volume of L is positive. Then you have a limit of uh, n goes to the infinity uh, one over n, one over n of two power d, volume of l to power n, and the tensor n is the same thing as the volume of l. And then you have the same thing. So you have a l m. It's the volume of l positive. So this. Is the theorem of Morion key. Um, okay. Uh, so you have exactly the, the same thing. So limits of n goes to the infinity, one over n to power d, volume hat of l to power n tensor n. So this is the volume of F. So, uh, so also in the in the definition you have some uh, limit of soup. Uh, it's actually a limit. So here you have the same thing. So this is first that I proved by myself by using such techniques. And uh, uh, you have uh, uh, some uh, Fujita type uh, theorem. So in some sense it's a little bit like this. So uh, if the volume of air is positive, then for any epsilon positive, you can find some A ample and the N, uh, which is a positive integer, such that H0 uh, of uh, x L to the power N tensor N dual A dual is not, uh, not zero. And also, the volume of A over N to power D is almost the volume of L. So it's volume of L minus Y. It's almost it's at least volume of L minus Y. So not only a such thing contains some ample line bundle, also uh, such ample line bundle gives a volume which is very similar to, to uh, that of L to power N. <coughs> So, uh, maybe I will not write the detail, but you have a very similar result. So, uh, 
So this is proved by uh, independent, independently by Yuan and myself. So uh, this is a uh, formally a conjecture. So this two thing is formally a conjecture of Minwaki. So each time you find um, something which is uh, more or less classical on the left hand side, then uh, they are relatively new and uh, more complicated on the right hand side. So uh, you also have um, um, differentiability. So this is not that um, classical, it's more recent work of Buxon. Johnson. So, uh, so assume that L is big. Then, uh, then the limit where n goes to the infinity, the volume of L to the power n, then it has n minus uh, volume of two, volume of L to the power n. So maybe uh, so this is such thing divided by n to the power d minus one. So such thing exists. Um, not only such thing exists, but also and and is a linear form. On M. So uh, here you have a similar result. So it's it's proved by myself, but you see somehow a very similar. Idea. Um, okay, so this will give you a, an image of uh, uh, whether we can do uh, the left hand side and the right hand side. Um, okay, so uh, the purpose of uh, the coming lectures will explain how uh, how to apply such techniques of our filtrations to uh, to general geometry of higher dimensional variety of uh, an analytic curve. So as I I repeat that uh, the method consisting of a projection procedure of geometry over higher dimensional varieties to some geometry of uh, our filtrations or of uh, uh, Adelic uh, curve of just one field with uh, tubular valued, uh, tubular, uh, tubular valuation. So uh, maybe in the afternoon I need to uh, do some work on uh, the geometry of numbers in the setting of uh, more more general analytic curves. So I just stop here and I will uh, uh, continue in the afternoon. Okay. So do you have a question or comment? Let's thanks again. Yeah.